Good morning, guys. It is the last hoorah before the surgery. So we are gonna go out here in Medellin. We got a fun day planned. We're taking you with us. And in three days, I get a new knee. We're gonna wear that old knee out today, guys. <laughs> yeah, so come on, let's go. <laughs> We are going to jump on the metro for the first time in Medellin. Yeah. So this is going to be a learning experience. And then we're going to jump on some of those cable cars we've seen. Not only in Medellin, we saw them in Pereira and Cali. We're going to jump on those. We're going to head up to Parque RV, do a little bit of a nature hike. There's also some shops up there. And we're going to meet some other overlanders. Yeah. So we got a lot of stuff in store today. Busy day. Cramming it all in before the big surgery. Now most people would just walk to the closest metro station, but we're gonna take an Uber to a metro station to save a little bit of my knee. And he's turning in right now. So the journey begins, guys, let's go. All right, it's a pretty good drive over here to San Antonio. This is sort of one of the main stations right here. I think we're just coming under it. So we've talked about before that when you come to these little towns, you get to different neighborhoods and they have different specialties. Well, here they have a lot of little sewing machines and fabrics and textiles and all that stuff. So this is clearly a part of town you'd want to come if you needed to get any work like that done. But the little city, the area is very hectic. You can see the rubbish truck right in front of us. They're picking up trash. But what a fascinating little neighborhood. So we're about to get dropped off and then we gotta figure out how this metro station actually works. is ours gather all your belongings make sure you don't leave anything behind don't leave me here we have to change cars and get into a i think we have another train ride to get to the cable okay guys that was an adventure it's not quite over we don't know if we have to change cars somewhere or if this car takes us all the way to our destination but we are in one of the famous metro cars that fly in the air like you're at a ski resort back home and it leaves the valley and takes you up into these communities all around. So today we are going up to a place called RV Park and it is a really popular area to go to kind of get away from the city and there might be, we've heard, we'll find out when we get there, some like indigenous activity up here. Uh, so maybe there's a little market, but hopefully we're meeting some friends that we've met along the way and online. 
up here for some lunch and or coffee. But check out these views of Medellin. If you've been following our journey the whole time, you know that we like to be out in nature, away from the cities, but while we're taking care of this knee, we have no choice. We are gonna have to show y'all a little bit of the urban lifestyle and something that comes with a big city, pollution. What we have learned over the past few weeks here in Medellin is there are some days that are good, and some days that are not so good. I'm sure it's something to do with the climate, but today, not so good. We got a bit of smog going on. That's why it looks a bit hazy in the background. It's still a beautiful city. Look at these houses. And so here they don't call them class or caste systems, but they call them stratos. So the different neighborhoods throughout Medellin have different stratos. So one, two being the lowest stratos and five being the highest. And so as we come up through here, you can look down through some of these houses and you can see some of these dwellings are in the one or two level stratus. And all that really means is it's a little bit more of a poor area, but still so fascinating to look at and to watch as we kind of come up through the sky on these cable cars, climb out of the valley of Medellin and up to the mountains. We've seen this sprawl for a while and it's kind of actually really cool to come up through it almost like a drone i feel like a drone we are a drone <laughs> <laughs> all right that was stop one we got two more stops to go to get all the way up here to the park we keep climbing my ears are popping <laughs> One thing we have learned, and we talked about it briefly in a past video that Kurt did where he went on a hike with our friend Carlos up through Carlos's neighborhood, is there's something here called generational houses. And what that means is a long time ago, it was a single story house. The family had kids. As the kids started to become adults, they just built a second story on top of their house. And that's where the kids moved into. And then more time passed, the kids had kids. So the third floor is the third generation. Fourth floor would be a fourth generation. And most of them, I think, and this is just me kind of doing an assumption, I think the generational houses would actually be the ones that have the staircases on the outside. So the second and third generations could get into their house without going through the first generation's house. It's a really cool concept. So as we come up through these neighborhoods, I can't wait to explore this city on foot, but I'm always reminded that I don't speak the language. <laughs> so I definitely have been challenged by one of our YouTube fam to double down on my Spanish and improve my Spanish while Snow's undergoing intensive rehabilitation. So, so what is super exciting about that is uh, Kurt's going to have a lot of time, and I am too, once I get through the initial pain. So we are very excited to let you guys know that we're going to be kind of working with Rosetta Stone. They're, uh, they're going to help Kurt accept the challenge and learn to speak this language a little bit better. First cable car down. Now we got to change cable cars for the last leg of the journey up to RV Parque. Look at the stairs going up. <laughs> so if you live up here, you've got a lot of stairs to climb. Well, this one goes much faster. Yeah. This, all right, we just changed cable cars and we got on like the super high speed one. This one clearly goes faster. You can hear the roosters crowing. We're definitely getting up in the country we're almost up out of the city. We're coming up out now, and it looks like we're about to top the hill. And the weather has definitely gotten cooler. Yeah, it feels nice up here. It's nice that we came up during the week. It's not crowded. Uh, this place, a lot of people from the city that live here and work here, they come up here for an escape for the day on the weekends or on the holidays. 
So we definitely planned a middle of the week adventure for this. So as So said, this is her last hurrah before her knee surgery. And uh, to be honest with you, you know, you've heard us say this several times. You probably know this from your personal life, but the weight is the hardest part. And, you know, we've been doing more than weight and we've been scrambling for all the doctor's appointments, all the other stuff, trying to get familiar with Medellin, get moved into an apartment and sort of get used to this new temporary weight or lifestyle. And uh, it's, it's, it's been a lot. And I think there's been a lot of nervous tension waiting out for this moment. So I know Snow is super excited to get this behind her and to get this done. I also know she's got to be super nervous because I am super nervous. And I can't imagine what's going on through her mind. But we're really anxious and ready to get this done, get it behind us. And you know, the knee has had a major impact on Snow's life for a lot longer than I realized. And I think actually both of us realized. So we're hoping that this is gonna be a truly life-changing experience. But most of all, we're ready to get back in the van. <laughs> we miss our van. And start to see Columbia. Hey. 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 How are you? Oh, awesome. So one of the things that we haven't mentioned to you guys is that when we're, our time expires here in Colombia, the Ecuador land borders are not open. So we're here with our other overlanding friends and we're actually discussing yeah. what the different options are. It's actually a pretty interesting conversation, conversation especially given that these guys have tons of experience <laughs> yes, overlanding. Yes. So this is Pat Hi. and her husband, Neil. And they have the dilemma of having to leave the country pretty soon. 15 days. Yeah. So what happened, guys, is they were here when COVID hit. They left their vehicle here. If you will back up several videos, it is the awesome rig we camped next to up at the El, El Bosque Hostel when we first got to Medellin. So, yes, yeah, some very interesting conversations about the Ecuador land borders right now. And this is D. How long have you been here? Uh, <laughs> 2019. Do we need to beep that out? <laughs> yeah, so, so Pat and Neil went home for COVID. D and Summer did like we did. They locked down where they were. Roots. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this, guys, you know, we've been kind of on our own out here on the road because of COVID. But the, the overlanders are starting to come back, aren't they, Kurt? So we're learning some cool stuff here. Yeah. They're coming back. <laughs> we're going to go grab some lunch with our overlanding friends. And then after that, Kurt's going to show you around this place a little bit more. And uh, let's go see what it has to offer. Um, pechuga la planca. Pedro. No papas fritas. Mas ensalada. Okay. See, gracias. All right, so y'all can get a good look at traditional Colombia food because we have the full spectrum. So Snow's got some chicken, some salad. I had him add a chorizo to mine and some rice. I think you've got the same thing. Oh, look at that. Chuzo. Chuzo. So a little kebab. Oh, and the chicharrones. And chicharrones yeah. down there on the end. Everybody, and some limonadas. Everybody, every, Cheers. Everybody's got them Our new them overlanding up. friends. Cheers. 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 So we had a nice lunch with our overlanding friends, our fellow travelers. We're fixing to walk them to the, uh, the metro car. And I think they're going to take a short little ride on it before they leave here. And I think Kurt is going to take you guys on a walk around this park. I'm gonna go find the little market, hang out there and see what the coffee tastes like up here. So guys, Kurt is going to go on a short little hike. We had such a good time catching up with some fellow travelers that we lost track of time, so he doesn't have time for a long hike. I think he's also going to try to fly the drone while he's out there. So I've got some coffee. And then on the ride up here in the, the Metro cable car, Kurt mentioned this. 
and a lot of you guys encourage us to learn Spanish a little bit better, but one of you actually used the words challenge. One of you challenged Kurt to learn Spanish while I'm going through the rehabilitation from my knee surgery, which is literally in three days. Well, you guys are not the only one that noticed that we need some serious help learning to speak another language. So Rosetta Stone actually reached out to us and they are going to help us. If you've been with us on this YouTube journey for a while, well, you know that we spent a year in Mexico, nine months in Central America, and now we're exploring South America in our tiny house on wheels. In Mexico, we could only speak a few basic words of Spanish. And don't get me wrong, our time in Mexico was amazing. But if we could chat with the locals, well, we know our time could have been better. And in Central America, we actually started to naturally pick up a few more words here and there. But we still didn't feel confident asking questions and navigating the border crossings. And we know that we were still missing out on immersing ourselves into the local atmosphere, which meant missing out on some pretty cool interactions. And now that we're in South America, well, we've decided that we're dedicating 20 to 30 minutes a day to improving our Spanish. And we'll be using Rosetta Stone to do it. Rosetta Stone will teach us new vocabulary words and new language skills as we continue our journey around South America. The award-winning program uses language immersion, real word scenarios, and my favorite, pronunciation and slang from the native speakers. When you're getting started, you choose your own skill level and Rosetta Stone creates a program designed just for you. We get to use Rosetta Stone on our computer or on the cell phone app, which is great if we're on one of those super long, crazy driving days down here in Colombia. We're excited that we will have more confidence to ask questions, navigate the logistics of our journey, and be able to easily immerse ourselves into the local culture here in Colombia, and then Ecuador, Peru, Argentina, and, well, most of South America. And Rosetta Stone has 25 languages to choose from, so we can learn another language as we head over towards Europe in a couple of years. They offer monthly subscriptions or a super cost-effective lifetime membership so that you can just come back and brush up on your language skills anytime in the future. Now Rosetta Stone has given us a link to share with you all. You can find the link in the description below. You'll find some great savings there too, guys. We're also going to put it on our website. So we challenge you. Come learn a new language with us. All right, guys, we are leaving RV Park. We have been really lucky because we've had our own cable car both up and on the way back, which means that we can take our masks off right. and breathe fresh air. <laughs> yes, yes. Now we're gonna head back down, and I think before we head back to the apartment, Kurt maybe has a little shopping to do. I do. I need to get a new ball cap. This one's definitely worn out, and I've been losing them lately. I don't know how, <laughs> but my Panama hat's gone, so I'm bummed about that. But it's okay because I'm not in Panama anywhere. I need a Columbia hat. So Let's go find one. Means. It's starting to rain in Medellin every day. And the sun's even out a little bit while it's raining. But you can look over the city center there now. You can see downtown. And all the way, if you look all the way back, I don't know if you can see it through the rain, is Poblado. That's sort of the kind of big fancy district down there. And we're over just to the right of the city center.
right, guys. Kurt needed a hat. <laughs> Kurt, I think we found the place to buy hats. Yeah, I know. Turn it around. Show him your hat. All right. All right, guys. Where are we going next? Back home. to the apartment. Home. We're headed home, guys. Let's go up here and find a place we can order us an Uber. Maybe we should get back on the subway and go over out of this mess. So we may, may have made a mistake. We got off here to get a hat and now we're trying to get a cab back to the apartment. And this place is a hot mess. Super crowded, you guys can see. There are tons of people looking for cabs. We have not been able to get one. Gracias. Ah, gracias. So we made it through the zoo and we found a place. This place is <laughs> off the charts crazy. Something that was, I guess, not expected. <laughs> Probably should have been. But you can see, this is Centro. Clearly the main market shopping area. They have got literally everything down here you could want and more. Oh, guys. We just left the melee. <laughs> <laughs> we got off the the metro apparently in centro at rush hour it was insane fighting for cabs ubers wouldn't even attempt to come down there yeah. but we finally found a cab he brought us to within a couple of hundred feet which is good because my knees are toast my last hoorah before knee surgery was a big success guys Thanks for coming along. The next time we see you, it's finally here. The moment we've been waiting on for seven months. I'll we'll, be walking you through it. Kurt's going to be there with us filming the surgery. So we'll see you guys in a few days at the hospital. Cheers, guys. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys.